Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today we're going to be creating a scoreboard using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so we can see here I can increase or decrease my scores for each team and it looks fairly straightforward but we're going to be using some pretty uh, interesting techniques including things like CSS Grid, Flexbox and the JavaScript import export syntax with classes. Okay, so if you're not too comfortable with any of those technologies, I recommend you stick around because you might learn something from today's project. Now, the source code for this is going to be linked down below if you want to download and follow along. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what we just saw. So going inside the text editor, I've got this index HTML with an empty linked style sheet right up here. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to be showing you the HTML and the CSS first before moving on to the JavaScript. Okay, so when it comes to the HTML for this, we're going to be creating a new div here with a class of scoreboard. So this is going to be the main container for the scoreboard and this one here is going to be using CSS grid to give us those columns and rows. So now inside here, we need two divs, one for each player name. So down here, we can just say scoreboard underscore underscore name for the class. And we can say inside here something like player one and make a second, uh, sorry, make a second one uh, player two. Okay, so um, we can see I'm I'm using the block element modifier CSS class naming convention, but you can name these classes whatever you like. Okay, so we have our two player names, one and two. The next step is going to be to make another div called scoreboard underscore underscore score and make this zero. So basically this is just going to be a container for the score of player one, currently zero. Make a second one for player two. So now we're going to be using CSS grid to give us, you know, our rows and columns. So right now we can see in the browser, it looks something like this. So let's transform this into this right here using CSS grid. So going back in the text editor, let's head inside my CSS style sheet and we're going to be targeting firstly the class of scoreboard. Of course, this one here referring to, you know, our main container. So right here, the most important thing is going to be to say a display of grid. So now we can start using more properties down below to, you know, give us our columns and rows. So when it comes to the grid, we're going to be saying here grid dash templates dash columns. So we want to say inside here, one FR, one FR. So by saying one FR, one FR, we're basically giving us a two column grid, which is what we need for our scoreboard one and then two. So a two column grid and each column is taking up the same amount of freely available space. So basically we're getting two evenly spaced columns. If I save this here, go back in the browser and then we can see we have our two columns right there. In the inspector, if we inspect the scoreboard, we can see those lines and the grid actually working. Okay, so basically, we have all we need in terms of the grid in order to get this thing working. Now, we also want to say a width of 300px just to limit the size of the actual scoreboard. So we get something like this now. And also, just a few finishing touches, we can actually change this 1fr, 1fr to simply be repeat, then 2, 1fr. So repeat 2, 1fr is the exact same as just saying 1fr, 1fr. Okay, just a little shortcut. Then we can finally just say a font family of quicksand and then sans serif. This is just my font of choice, so we can save this back in the browser. And of course, we have this right here. So let's move on now to styling up both the name and the score. So back inside here, let's target scoreboard underscore underscore name and the scoreboard underscore underscore uh, score. So for both the name and score, we're going to be setting some common styles. The first one is going to be a padding of 10 px and a text align of center. Save this back in the browser. We have some extra space between the name and the score. And of course, everything is now centered. 
Let's now target the name specifically. So going back inside here, we're going to be saying scoreboard underscore underscore name. We can say a font weight, font weight of bold and a border dash bottom, 1px solid, then a very light gray, triple D right there. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and we have our bold and our line underneath each name. Now, we do need to change the color of each name. So to achieve this, let's go back in the HTML and we're gonna be adding a modifier class to each name. So copy the class here, gonna press space, gonna say dash dash one. So scoreboard name one, the exact same thing now for scoreboard name dash dash two. Then in the CSS, let's make a rule set for each one of those. So scoreboard name dash dash one. So for the so for player one basically, we're gonna say color and make this 0095789578 right there. Make a second one here for dash dash two and just make this uh, you know 2D0095. Save this back in the browser. We have a green and blue text, fairly straightforward. So next up, let's style up the score. So for this, very straightforward, let's target the class of scoreboard underscore underscore score. So for this, we can just say a font size of 2EM. Save this. And now, of course, we have a two, sorry, a two times bigger font size for the score. Okay, cool. Next up, we've got our control buttons down here. So for this, we need to add another or two more divs. So I'll just, uh, I'll just make a copy of these two here. There we go. So when it comes to the buttons on the bottom of the scoreboard, these will have a class of scoreboard underscore underscore controls. So for each one of our scoreboard controls divs, there's gonna be two buttons inside them, one for subtract and one for add. So inside here, we can say button with a class of uh, scoreboard underscore underscore control dash button okay this will have a minus symbol inside of it the next one a plus symbol inside of it and there we go so now I might just uh, copy the entire control so basically we have controls for player one and controls for player two and that is all we need when it comes to the HTML if I save this and go back in the browser we have something like this. So let's apply some CSS to make it look like this. So going back inside the CSS right up here, we're going to be targeting the scoreboard underscore underscore controls class. So for the controls container, we're going to say display and make this flex. The reason for display flex is so we can evenly space out the subtract and, you know, add buttons. Okay. So by using flex now, we can go back down here and we can say scoreboard underscore underscore control dash button. So for each individual button now, we can say flex dash grow and make this one. So flex grow, there we go. So flex grow one. So now with this flex grow one, it just means that uh, very similar to our grid of, you know, two one FR, it means that, you know, both buttons are going to take up the same amount of space, giving us 50-50. If we go back in the browser, we get 50 and 50, so evenly spaced buttons, okay? Cool. Now, next up, we are going to uh, say border and make this none on the buttons themselves. Give them a light gray background of triple E, a cursor of pointer, then finally, a font size of 1.2 EM for slightly larger font size. Save this back in the browser and we have this right here. The last step is going to be to add some different background colors on hover and button press. So going back inside here, let's say scoreboard control button colon hover. So when hovering over the button, we can change the background to be a slightly darker gray of triple D. Then copy this we can say now when the button gets pressed on by saying colon active we can make this triple c once again a darker version of even this one here so 
Save this back in the browser and we have each button styled up perfectly fine. So this is all we need when it comes to the CSS and the HTML for the scoreboard. So now we're going to move on to the JavaScript. Okay, so when it comes to the JavaScript, basically, if we go back inside here, all of the HTML which we just wrote is going to be inserted using the JavaScript instead when the page first loads up. Okay, so the first step of this is going to be to create a new div with an ID of app. Okay, so basically, we're going to be giving this div to the JavaScript code. It is then on page load, going to grab all of this stuff right here and put it inside there. Okay, so uh, before we actually get to that part, I just want to go back here and keep this div and I just want to create each file for the JavaScript. Okay, so inside here, we can make a new file called main.js. So this main.js file is just going to be like the central controller for all of the logic related to our scoreboard. Okay, the second file here is going to be in a new directory. This directory is going to be called scoreboard. So inside here, we can make a new file called scoreboardview.js. So this right here is going to be a class which handles all of our user interface HTML uh, responding to when the user presses on buttons and things like that. So it's going to be our separate area just for the code relating to the view or the HTML. Okay. Now back inside the main.js, I just want to specify a couple of things inside here. The first one is going to be a new variable. I'm going to call this variable player one score equal to zero and do the exact same thing for player two. So basically just holding the scores of each player inside these two variables. Okay. Next up, we need to get a reference to our app right up here. So this new div, which we just created. So for this, going back inside here, we can say const app, or I should probably say root is equal to document.query selector and pass through here the ID of app. Okay, so now basically we're going to be passing through this root div into the scoreboard view. But first, I just want to link up the JavaScript right down here. So we're going to say script source going to main.js. We're going to say here a type of module. This is very important because um, by using a type of module, it's going to allow us to then import the scoreboard view code into our main.js. Okay, so speaking of that, let's go right up here and we're going to say import scoreboard view from dot forward slash scoreboard then scoreboard view dot js. Okay, so we've imported the scoreboard view. We can now actually work on the code for that view. Okay, so for this right here, we're going to be saying export default class scoreboard view. Okay, so like I said earlier, it's going to be a class containing all of the logic when it comes to the view of the scoreboard. This export default is just, uh, it just basically means that we can actually import this here into our main JS. Okay. Now for the class of scoreboard view, we're going to be specifying a constructor. If you're not too sure what a constructor is, basically this code here runs once, once you create a new instance of this class. So we're going to be seeing how that works very shortly. But this constructor is going to take through the root HTML element, of course, in our case, being that div with an ID of app. The next one here is going to be the player one name. The next one, player two name. And the last one here is going to be called on score change. Okay, so we're going to be seeing how this on score change works later on. But for now, with our three parameters here, we can now basically move the code that is specified here in the HTML. We're going to move it to the JavaScript. So let's cut the code right here and make this a little bit neater. So with our HTML, we're going to be saying first off, just this dot root is equal to root, just to hold a reference to our root element. We're now going to say, this dot root dot inner HTML 
is equal to then using the back ticks on my keyboard for multi-line JavaScript strings, we can paste in the HTML just like this. Okay. So with the HTML inside here, uh, by using the back ticks, we can also basically inject the player one name and the player two name into these divs. So let's use the dollar sign curly braces to say player one name then do the exact same thing for the player 2. So inserting those names right there. Now, an extra step for the JavaScript is going to be to set a couple of attributes on our scores. So we're going to say here for each score, data dash four dash player equal to one. Okay, so we're going to be seeing, oh sorry, my, my mistake, it needs to be one and then two for the second score. So this here is just going to help the JavaScript code later on determine, you know, which score to update. So we're going to be seeing why this is useful later on. But for now, let's just include those and do the exact same thing. Another data attribute here for the controls and for the last control here for player two. So that's a lot of code. So I'm just going to pause here and go back in the browser and just see what actually happens. So we can see that uh, we actually have nothing and that is because we haven't uh, made a new instance of our scoreboard view. So let's create a new scoreboard view. We're going back in the main.js and we're going to be saying right down here, uh, const view is equal to a new scoreboard view. This right here is going to call our constructor. We're going to pass through here the root element, the, uh, the player one name, which is going to be something like, uh, let's just do player one. And the player two name is going to be player two. And we're going to leave out the on score change just for now. We're going to save this, go back in the browser, and we have this right here. So that's all working perfectly fine, but as we can see, I made a mistake on the player one. So let's go back inside here and just change our um, this value here to be player two name. Go back in the browser. We have player one and we have player two. So basically, we're just injecting the HTML using JavaScript instead. Now, why is this important? It's important because we can now basically uh, attach event listeners to um, you know each one of our buttons here. So basically, we're going to allow the user to react to when a score has been changed, or at least when the buttons for the scores have been pressed on. Okay, so for this, uh, if we go down here in the constructor, we're going to be saying uh, this dot root. So referencing our app element, I'm going to say here dot query selector. Okay, so query selector all. So inside here, I'm going to pass through here scoreboard underscore underscore control dash button. So basically, we're selecting every single control button, each one of these four right here. We're now going to say dot for each. So for each control button, going to grab onto the control button right here. And we're just going to say inside this function, we're going to say control button dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the click event. So when a control button gets clicked on, we're going to do something. Okay. As we can see, we have our subtract and our plus. So first let's determine what the user is trying to do, because obviously all we have here is the control button itself. We don't have, you know, if it's a subtract or plus. So for this, we're going to say const direction. Okay. The direction is either going to be minus or plus. We're going to say control button dot text content is equal to subtract. If it is, then we're going to say minus. Otherwise, we're going to say plus. So basically, we're converting our subtract or plus here into actual strings, which say minus and plus. Just easier to read that way. Then the second one is going to be const player equal to control button dot data set 
sorry, control button dot closest, okay, closest scoreboard underscore underscore controls, then dot data set dot for player. So let me explain this right here. So basically, we're starting at the control button, then we're saying dot closest. So dot closest is going to check, it's going to go up in the HTML and it's going to look for the class of scoreboard underscore underscore control. So if we press on player one's plus button right here, it's going to go up and it's going to find the div of scoreboard controls, which we pass in here. Then we're saying dot data set dot for player, just accessing the data for player property here, which we've set. So basically it's either going to be player one or player two. Okay, so now we we have we have two things. We've got the direction and the player. If I console.log the direction, then the player, okay, save this, go back in the browser, then click on the subtract for player one, we get minus and then one. Same goes for plus, we get plus one, minus plus. So there we go. Alright, that's all working. So now basically we want to communicate back to our main.js that the button has been pressed on. That is what the on score change is representing. Now, to be honest, it's probably a better name to say on control button change. So let's change that right now. We're going to say on control button. You know what? On control button click is a much better name. So on control button click. We're going to be calling this function. Now I say function because basically this main.js is going to pass in here a function. Okay, this is going to handle when, of course, the control button gets clicked on. So let me just write this out first. It's going to make it easy to explain. So this function here is going to take in two parameters, the player and the direction. Okay. So, um, we can see now that basically, when a button gets clicked on, down here, we're going to call this function, and we have access to both the player and the direction. All right. Then inside here, we can do things like update the scores. So let's just stop here and go back in our class. On control button click, we're going to call from down here. So on control button click pass in the player and the direction in that order because of course this expects it in that order player and direction so pass in the player and direction this is simply just calling the function which we've passed in from here okay so now let's console.log the player and the direction once again just to see this change save this back in the browser click on the players and this time it, you can see here that it's calling the code from our console log down here as opposed to the class so we've communicated back to the um to the main js that a button has been clicked on okay so what do we do now that a button has been clicked on we need to update the scores all right so the first step in doing that is going to be to go back inside the view. So uh, we're going to have a separate method here to say update. So this update method is going to be ran from our main.js. Update is going to take through a player one score and a player two score. Okay. So with the update method, it's going to simply just say this dot root dot query selector. Okay going to take through here the class of scoreboard underscore underscore score so just targeting that div which holds the score then using square brackets we're going to say data dash four dash player then say one so we're selecting using CSS uh, you know selectors get me the class of scoreboard score which has a data attribute here using the square brackets right a data attribute of four player equal to one. So for the first player's score, we're saying dot text content is equal to player one score that we pass in. Do the same thing down below. I'm going to say for player two, that goes to player two score. 
So now basically, if we go back in the main JS, we can call this function. We can say view.update, pass in 12 and then 30, for example. Save this back in the browser, we get 12 and 30. So we simply just need to um, apply some logic inside this callback function or in, in, inside this on control button change function to simply increase the value of each player. So in here, we're going to first calculate the difference which we need to make to each score. So we're going to say const difference is equal to if the direction we pass in is minus, then we're going to subtract one, just like that. So minus one. Otherwise, we're going to add one. So a simple positive one right there. Then we can say if the player is equal to one, then we can just say player one score is equal to then math.max. Pass through here player one score. So the current player one score being zero on the first page load. So zero plus the difference. Whether it's a negative one or one doesn't matter. Then a second argument to math.max is zero. So basically this math.max is just making sure that we never go into negative numbers because of course if this number ends up being negative, for example, negative two, zero is going to you know, be the maximum of these two values, of course. So math.max is going to choose the zero instead of the negative two, giving us that negative prevention. Okay, so player one score plus difference, fairly straightforward. We can now say else and do the exact same thing this time for the player two score. So player two score equal to player two score plus the difference. Then the very last step here is going to be to simply just say view.update, then pass through player one score, then player two score. And there we have it. So saving this here, going back in the browser, we are basically done. So I can press plus and it's going to work right there. Same goes for this player. So um, there we go. So that is how to create a scoreboard using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. If today's video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.